Hello, this is Janet Gallen welcoming you to another episode of Love Letters Live. And um, I know that I'm going to learn a lot. I hope you all do too. My guest is Kathleen Unger. And Kathleen, I'm just going to go right to you. You are the founder of Vote Riders. I am. Th and Janet, thank you so much for inviting me to your really extraordinary and 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 exquisite offering that you you provide to all of us. So well, I know that it's important. You know, I look for people who really have something to say and add to the world, and I know you do. But I am totally new to vote writers. Will you start telling us what it is and what is your goal? Oh, sure. Okay. Well. So uh, Vote Writers is a 501c3 national nonpartisan nonprofit that was born of my outrage when I saw perfectly eligible voters being prevented from voting for lack of a government issued photo ID. And I knew a tsunami of disenfranchising ID laws uh, were headed our way. Uh, so Vote Writers is the nation's leading organization that's laser focused on undoing the harm caused by voter ID laws and is increasingly the key to casting a ballot that counts, especially in 10 battleground states and especially for um, the at-risk voters who, who uh, may likely be the difference makers uh, in tight races this November and, and going forward. Okay, well, I have a couple of questions that you said First of all, when you were saying a 501c and nonpartisan, I had asked you when I first talked to you and we first met, did you have a particular slate of candidates that you want to see in office? And you said we are nonpartisan. I don't know yes. why that surprised me in an era where we, you know, people on both sides are working very hard to get their person in. So what made you do this nonpartisan and what's the advantage of that? Uh, well, uh, uh, Janet, I'm a, I am a, 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 a democracy idealist, a constitutional republic idealist. I believe in representative democracy, and that means all of us okay, good. to be a part of this. You know, the first three words of the Constitution, we the people. Oh, yes. yes. Okay. So that means all the people. Uh, now, how are you coming Sorry. I'm sorry, how did you come to learn? Because I, I don't want to forget to ask you this. You said you became aware of people who were not being allowed to vote for lack of a government issue. ID. Now, I am, I'm 83 years old. I've been voting for a long time. I've never been asked for a photo. Well, because... Where did this happen and how did you learn about it? All right, well, so... Um, uh, voter ID laws are in 38 states. And each state is responsible for its own laws? At, at, under the Constitution, the states uh, are uh, in charge of elections, okay. and these voter ID laws are different in every state. Okay, thank uh, you. You know, uh, just, just to, uh, you know, uh, make sure that everybody knows that, um, you know, so uh, voters already need to verify their, their citizenship on identity when they register to vote. Yeah. So ID laws create an even higher bar. Uh, okay, I founded Boat Riders in early 2012, uh, and uh, that uh, I I did so having seen that in the 2010 election there were a lot of uh, candidates who won, who were. Uh, touting the uh, importance of, of 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 voter ID laws. So, I've been just a little background. I'm 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 a lawyer. I have an MBA. I uh, in in uh, 2002, uh, my passion became election protection. Oh, good. And I was doing a lot of volunteer work. I'm still a 24/7 volunteer. Uh, uh, for terrific organizations. So I was, uh, you know, attuned to what was going on in that area. And therefore, that's why I, I picked up what was going on in the 2010 uh, landslide. And I knew that the existing organizations, which then and are just terrific, 
It wasn't even within the penumbra of what they do to help people to uh, to, to make sure that they have the, the right ID. These other organizations focus on litigation and advocacy. Vote Riders was laser, laser focused on voter ID, education, and free assistance. So we help people to obtain all the required documents that they need in order to get the ID. We we cover the cost of it. We we arrange for and pay for the cost of transportation to and from the ID issuing offices. These laws are incredibly complicated. So, uh, you know, those of us that are preventing them from voting. That those of us who, uh, frankly, for the most part, who have a current driver's license in our state, th th this is not an issue for us. Right. It's the literally tens of millions of, of voting age Americans who don't have that kind of ID. And who are these folks? They are, they are, you know, primarily their first time voters think, you know, youth and students. They are infrequent voters. They are um, um, uh, first time voters at a, at a precinct so that, you know, people who, who uh, move around, they are, uh, they are voters of color. Um, Janet, uh, vote writers uh, uh, recently um, engaged in uh, a, a national voter ID research, the first in almost 20 years. Mm which shows that uh, over 34 and a half million voting age uh, Americans uh, do not have an unexpired driver's license or state ID with their current address and name. Literally almost 35 million uh, voters okay. are in this predicament. I, I'm so overwhelmed by the scope of what you do. I noticed that behind you, I see the vote riders and the ID in the riders is in red to stress voter ID. Correct. So your focus is that people should be able to vote and get the necessary identi necessary acceptable identification to let them vote, right? Correct. Now, Correct. Is, and so and that's if, different from state to state. Yes, yes, absolutely. And how, how so, do you go about finding these people? So so uh, let me just bring up, so again, as I mentioned, there are 38 states with voter ID laws, but every state, including California, where both of us live and which doesn't have a state voter ID law, every state is filled with confused voters. Our research results also showed that, uh, uh, you know, for instance, 55% uh, of voters who live in strict photo ID states have no idea that they need this ID. Uh -huh. I mean, and it just, 56% uh, who uh, across the board don't know if they need ID to vote by mail. It's, and it's becoming an increasing. So how do you get in touch with these people? How do you find out who they are? And how okay. do you get in touch with them? Uh, lots of ways. Uh, first of all, I'm thrilled to report that we have now over 12,000 volunteers oh and goodness. we work with 22 partner organizations. Now, these partner organizations are primarily of two types, uh, both democracy organizations and direct service providers. So the direct service providers that can be anything from shelters and food pantries to libraries to mm -hmm. schools to, to employment-focused organizations and housing-focused organizations and healthcare-focused organizations. Um, so and and uh, an interesting aspect of of the of our focus on ID is that the fact is is that a lot of people who have life challenges need ID for other aspects of their oh, life. Oh, sure. You walk into okay. a medical facility now, you need yes. You think about that. Oh, I mean, uh, uh, Janet, we have uh, uh, helped voters who have been diagnosed with third and fourth stage cancer who want to be able to go to their doctor to get treatment. Mm -hmm. The doctor, of course, wants labs. The laboratory won't accept them without, uh, you know, essentially a government issued photo ID. So, that you're, so you're, you're covering a lot more ground than just voting here. 
Exactly, exactly. So uh, coming back to these partner organizations, they are very happy to work with us because their constituents, their clients uh, need ID for their their lives. OK, and then we help them get the ID and then we make sure that they know, uh, you know, how to register to vote and where the polling place is and what the dates are you know, to make sure they do this all in time. And um, so. So when all is said and done, you not only have this huge philosophy that's lovely, but you have to get in touch with every individual person somehow. So. A person to say, I know you don't have a, an ID to vote. Let's get you one. Right. So uh, uh, we uh, access uh voters who need help both directly i mean they're calling us we we do a lot of communications uh to 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 it's just so important for us to uh uh you know increase the awareness of the populace about id so mm -hmm. we engage in a lot of that but but also through our partner organizations we have partner toolkits. We have all kinds of ways that we work with them. Again, we focus just on, on the AID part. And so as such, we're of, we are of service to, we are a value add to everybody else. Oh, that's wonderful. They, they have their own agenda. That's fine. We just bring this extra bit and it helps everybody. And you let people, like when you call one of the partner organizations, you call the labs, you call the, you let them know that this is what you do and it will help them also. Right. And obviously, again, we do this on a nonpartisan basis. And, you know, it's just uh, uh, uh. so one of the ways, for instance, we will uh, find out about the voters who need help is through something called an open records request. And we have uh, in uh, among our our um, uh, volunteers, we ha we work with the pro bono practice of many law firms, including uh -huh. seven, at least seven of the biggest law firms globally in the world. OK, and so they these pro, pro, pro bono lawyers will uh, reach out to the secretary of state of uh, I'll give you an example uh, mm -hmm. in 2022. Um, uh, in Texas, in the primary uh, election. Uh, about 25,000 ballots were uh, or, and, and requests for absentee ballots were re rejected because under the latest version of the Texas election law, uh, you had to provide identification in connection with, you know, your absentee ballot. These people hadn't done that. Through an open records request, we... Uh, um, uh, received from the Secretary of State's office the contact information for the people whose ballots had been rejected. And uh, uh, we then, through our, uh, we have lots of volunteer uh, activities. And so through letter writing and text banking, et cetera, we reach out to them. And as a result, 92% of the people whom we had contacted through our letter writing, 87% of those whom we contacted through uh, text banking were able to cast a ballot that counted in the general election. Their ballot had been rejected in the primary. They actually oh, now were able to so, cast a ballot in, in the general election. Well, I, you know, I've had my absentee ballot, I guess, since the start of the pandemic. So I don't remember what the process is. But when you request an absentee ballot, you don't have to go physically to an office or an election center, do you? Uh, again, every state's law is different. Okay, uh, uh, so then your ID, you so, can tell it to them, but not everybody has a computer. Yeah. Exactly, and so when you think back to the uh, pandemic and everybody's, you know, at home. How many people have a printer in their home? Okay, exactly. where they can make a photocopy of their ID because right there are many states where an increasing number where they ask for if you're either you know requesting a mail-in ballot or with your mail-in ballot, you have to provide a photocopy of your ID. Yes. 
And, and by the way, a photocopy of your ID, that's not hard to forge. I mean, I shouldn't say that, but you know. I so, oh, you know, uh, it, it that is will not they make it. Will they make you come in sometime with the actual driver's license or the. Uh, when in that occurs, when someone uh, actually votes by a provisional ballot. So in a state where uh, you, you, there's a strict requirement for uh, an ID to vote say, you know, at the polls, okay? And you don't have the ID, either you don't have it yet or you left it at home mm -hmm. or something or other. Mm -hmm. They, you can vote by provisional ballot and that provisional ballot is set aside. Oh, and okay. again, each state's law is different yeah. in some states within 24 hours in some states within six days you have to show up at the clerk's office yeah, right. with your ID in order for that provisional ballot to count. This is so complicated what you do. I, I just <laughs> I, I want to say that for those of you listening, um, I did this. What a wonderful birthday gift at any time in life would be a donation to vote writers to Thank you. help the country run more smoothly. Thank uh, you. What a wonderful thing. You know, when you have somebody who's celebrating a birthday and they don't need another purse or a scarf, they yes. do need, they do, we all need voter safety. Right, exactly. Oh. And it's, and it's becoming increasing. I mean, so obviously this November election is right. uh, at numero uno, but going forward, these laws are, I mean, so uh, since 2020 alone, 18 states have passed new or stricter uh, voter ID laws. So many of the people who are, are going to be voting in this presidential election, they don't know that that there's a new ID law in town. Okay, oh, and they get an ugly surprise when they try to vote. Right, 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 right. So, so you're under uh, you're under huge pressure right now. After this election, um, there'll be a lull in the urgency, I guess. You'll you'll be able to keep working in a more relaxed manner. So we are a 365 operation. Okay? Right. Figured, yeah. Because number one, there are uh first of all, yes, there's the election on November 5. Likely in various jurisdictions, there will be runoffs. Oh, yes. Okay? Of so the, it continues. The election. Right. Then 2025, as there is in every odd number year, there are thousands of, of elections course, of course yeah. okay they're not federal elections but right. there are right. a handful of important state elections and then there are uh you know special elections and then there are municipal elections sure. and of course i didn't think of uh, yeah obviously that's so true so are, are there people standing in your way who are fighting you actively well uh those who uh I mean, groups Insi you know. insist that um, that that there's, uh, you know, voter fraud, which which, you know, study after study after study shows is not right. it's not reality. OK, it's it's just it's never been shown to it's infinitesimal. Right. And, and, and let's be clear. OK, a voter I.D. is designed to prevent voter impersonation, okay? It, it, I mean, there's uh, one uh, study shows that uh, from the literally over 1 billion uh, votes cast between 2000 and 2014, mm -hmm. there were 31 claims of, of, of voter impersonation mm -hmm a number of which likely are a result of clerical error uh -huh. or uh, the voters innocently thinking that they had, you know, the right. Anyway, uh, so, and these laws are becoming uh, more onerous. So they're the newest version is requiring documentary proof of citizenship to register to vote. Okay. And that would be a birth certificate in some cases, in many cases. A birth certificate, a a, a current passport, sure. a oh. 
uh, a certificate of nationalization, a naturalization, a certificate of citizenship. So your work's never going to end. I mean, you're going to need to do this forever. Just keep things safe. I, I mean, yes, because that's the direction it's mm. absolutely it's going in. So I, I, it's true. So you said now, right now, we're facing an election that is very anxiety producing. And um, I know I'm supposed to not, you know, take a side here, <laughs> but whatever side people are on, everybody's a nervous wreck. Yes. I should say everybody. That's ridiculous. But there's a lot of there's a lot of discomfort going around for sure. Yes. And and if I may just uh, butt it and say, action is the antidote to anxiety. Folks. Okay. I was, so, I, I was going to try to get you to say that. Yes. You. you said that right away. And <laughs> that is, well, it's true and it's important. So when you're feeling anxious or that things aren't going to go right, or you're concerned and concerned and concerned, yeah. right, that anxiety can be um conquered by action yes yes i you know people keep uh pointing out to us how thrilled and i'm talking about uh, volunteers how thrilled they are because what vote writers does is something very concrete okay right. you know there's there's something that you can do where you know this is likely someone who this is going to make a difference, certainly with regard to voting right. and very likely in other important aspects of their lives. Yes. And so, so, so you, you're kind of got this each one reach one for life. If everyone who helps you gets to help one person yeah. get the identification or whatever requirements they need to vote, we've yes. done something remarkable. Yes, it's it's really it is so fantastic. And so, you know, uh, uh, vote writers is V O T E R I D E R S dot org. Yes. And if you go to vote dot org in the toolbar, there's you can click on on volunteer and then you'll oh. you can access different ways of volunteering. Um, and of course, also, if you're because I'm sure that your audiences global, but in the U.S., if you go to votewriters.org, there's an interactive color-coded map right there on the home page and go to your state and see oh, excellent. What, what's, what are the ID requirements in your state to vote in person, to vote by mail. So how did you come up? You know, when I first saw Vote Writers, the first thing that occurred to me was going to different states and getting in the car and taking people to the polls yes, and really having to do with, you know, vehicular health. So how did you come up with the name Riders? Thank you. Thank you for asking. Uh, I named it after Freedom Riders. Okay. 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 Yes. Going back to, uh, and, uh, you know, I provided you with a, uh, a photo of myself with 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 John Lewis. Yes. And yes. Who, okay. Uh, is, is very important to, uh, the, the 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 civil rights movement and 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 the 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 right to vote for uh, certainly black voters and voters of color and continues to be or, or voters who have the education to help them do what they have to do. But you just said something perfect because you know I am basically about the power of written love letters, which really has a huge you know subset of almost everything. And um, you're doing something historically really important. You're doing something historically important. And I want to ask you, who gets your love letter today? And I I'm sure you know this. I know this. People do not throw them away. A handwritten letter is worth gold mm -hmm. and will stay in your archives and will be found later, generations later. And they are an actually... Um, a trustable part of history. You know, when you see a report of a history of anybody done in letters, you know it's the truth. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not somebody supposing, and it's it's documented history. Who would get your love letter today? Well, I mean, you write one and you put it in an envelope and stamp it and mail it. Uh, I would uh, send my letter to uh, my my oldest, as in long-term, mm -hmm. friend, 
<laughs> His name is Helene. And uh, the reason is that um, um, I, when we were kids and through our teenage years, uh, we lived like, uh, uh, you know, a half a block and from each other. And I spent um, a lot of time at her and her family's home. And uh, it was Helene and, and, and really her dad who I think awakened in me, uh, uh, you know, the view of, of America from a, frankly, a political perspective. Mm -hmm. And, um, and that has uh, stayed with me uh, ever since. And obviously the, this manifestation uh, on which I, again, devote 24 seven and have done so since really probably almost 14 years uh, uh, is, the, is, is, the, is, is that's it's my present day manifestation of of the um, the important and and uh, 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 loving and a thoughtful um, dialogue that so when you write that letter, you know, specifics are important. To any good lover mm. and so you will say all those exact things of course okay i mean that's that's really important and i find that when people get letters such as this that have specific remembrances yes the, the response is usually i didn't know that you remembered that mm -hmm. i didn't know that you knew that mm -hmm. it's it's you know triple the gift so you you let people know that you not only heard and you remember, but that you put it into action. Yes. And maybe it would be nice. I mean, I know I'm not supposed to be bossy about love letters, but maybe it would be nice. You say what you think to really include the manifestation. In other words, what you actually have ended up doing to get people to be able to vote. Just make it like, a, you know, a loving historical document. Yes. In a way, people won't read more than a page as a rule, but... Do you think it would be a good idea to send a copy to the offices of vote writers or wherever your main office and stick it in an archive or stick it in a folder? Hmm. What do you that's, think? that's an interesting, that's a very interesting thought. Uh, I will, uh, let, let me, let me think on that. Let me okay. think on that. Uh, I, I, in all honesty, Janet, tend to uh, focus on uh you know, uh, focus outwardly when it comes to to to, sure. to vote writers. It is definitely not about me. <laughs> it is. Oh. I mean, granted, it, 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 you know, it 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 it. I generated this, no question about it. And it as you can see, I'm still very involved, and so I deeply care about it. But well, but can't you say something like, you know, and here's what, and here's the manifestation of this is what vote writers has been doing. And vote writers, not about you, but whatever you think you can do. <laughs> Thank you for doing this with me. I have certainly learned a lot. I didn't know any of this. I'm very grateful to have learned something here. Thank oh, you. Well, I'm very grateful that you would uh, engage in this conversation and share it with well, uh, all, when I, all when I your fans. First of all, I was kind of surprised that there's something so huge I didn't know about. <laughs> and, you know, especially today. Yeah. And and how important this is yes okay that there's there's a uh, uh, uh joshua douglas is a professor of law at uh the university of kentucky who wrote a book uh and and he devoted a chapter to vote writers uh, with the title of something to the effect of the most important democracy organization you've oh. never heard of. yeah so, exactly right. right so I, yes i'm hoping more and more people and you know That's, they told us in grand i remember this like third grade Voting is your duty and your privilege. And that sure made sense. Mm -hmm. And they stressed all through life that your voice counts. Absolutely. And Absolutely. So the, the genesis of, of vote writers really is about citizen helping citizen. Okay. Janet, we have the power to actually help people to make sure that they have the ID that they need and the confidence that they do so they're not going to be intimidated by all this, okay? We haven't given our power over to the courts and we haven't given our power over to legislatures and 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 governors. We can do this. And so that's... Uh, 
Thank if anybody's you. interested in helping, that would be grand. Well, thank you for all that you've taught and all that you've said. I appreciate it a lot. And um, we'll be in touch. Thank you. Thank you very kindly. Appreciate it. Good luck. Bye. Oh, with you. Uh, good luck to you for all of us. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Okay. Bye. We want to say, please help Kathleen help us, right? Yes. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Bye. Bye.